Hey guys, in this video we'll be learning about the operations of a DC motor. Let's get started. First let's look at the parts of a DC motor. This is a very basic model of DC motor. On the two ends, you can see the north and the south, we have the permanent magnets. These are the magnets. And then here we have a power source. The power source is connected to X and Y. X and Y are called carbon brushes. They are made of carbon and they brush against what we call the commutator. This is the commutator, very important piece of equipment in the DC motor. And then the commutator is connected to the coil. This is the coil. Now, let's get to how it works. We are going to break down one complete cycle into two half rotations. So the first half rotation, let's first follow the direction of current. Current goes from the positive terminal out into X and then it goes into the coil. From the commutator it goes to the coil, so it goes in here, it goes from B to A, A to B, B to C and then back to the commutator. But we are going to the other ring, the other half of the ring. And then current comes out of Y and goes to the negative terminal. So this is the direction of current. The DC motor works based on a resultant force due to a catapult field. Let's study what that is. When the current goes from B to A, there is going to be a radial magnetic field created around the coil from B to A. When current flows through a conductor, there will be a magnetic field forming around it. I've already covered this in detail. I will leave uh, the link to the video in the description below. You can check that out. But this is what happens. There is a magnetic field created around the conductor. And don't forget, this coil is placed in another magnetic field from the permanent magnets, which are this way, north to south. So now we have the magnetic field around the coil. Around the coil, this will be from our point of view, clockwise. And the magnetic field from the permanent magnet. So now the two magnetic fields are going to interact. And when they interact, they are going to form a catapult field. This catapult field is then going to form a resultant force. There will be a resultant force due to the catapult field. And how do we figure the direction of the resultant force? We use Fleming's left hand rule. So now we're going to practice Fleming's left hand rule. I will cover all these topics in detail separately. I will leave the links to the videos in the description below. So now we have Fleming's left hand rule. Whenever we are using DC motor, we need to use the left hand rule, not the right hand rule. So let's try this. The current is going from B to A. Current is the middle finger. Current is going into the plane, away from us. So let's point the middle finger away. And then point the middle finger away from you. And then the magnetic field. The index finger is for the magnetic field. The magnetic field of the permanent magnets is north to south, which means left to right. So we're going to point the index finger right. And the thumb will tell us the direction of the force. So now current is going in, the magnetic field is left to right, and the force is downwards. So this is the force. The direction of the force on AB is down. Let's do the same for CD. In CD, we also have a radial magnetic field forming here. But this time the current is coming out of the plane. So, from our point of view, this will be in the counterclockwise direction. Now, let's use the left-hand rule again. So, current is coming out of the plane, towards you. It's going from D to C. So, we shall point the current towards us, towards yourself, point the current towards yourself. And once again, magnetic field, index finger, is left to right. This doesn't change. So, we are going to move it this way. The current is facing you. Magnetic field left to right, force is upwards. So there will be a force in this direction, upwards. So you can see on AB the force is downwards, on CD the force is upwards. So this is going to create a counterclockwise rotation, a rotation in this direction. So this is how the motor is going to start to turn. So when the motor starts to turn, let's pay attention to the commutators. This is where it gets a bit complicated. So I created a model just to demonstrate this. 
this is the motor, this is the coil, this is the commutator, and the black strip is the part where it breaks. It is the, the gap between the two halves of the commutator. So, right now we are in this direction. We are here, and this is the blue pipe. This is where X is. Right. So, when current goes through X, and the commutator starts to turn. So our commutator is going to turn this way. So AB is going to go down, and then CD is going to go up. So it's going to turn this way until it comes to the vertical position. When it is at the vertical position, you can see the commutator has now hit the gap. There's going to be an instant in time where it's temporarily disconnected. And as it turns over, now current is going to go into the other half of the commutator. So remember this half is connected to CD. Let's start again. So initially we are like this. This is X, current is going in to the blue side. Current is going in and this is AB. So current is going in to A to B to C to D, this way. Once we go to the vertical position, it is temporarily disconnected from the circuit and then we connect we continue to the other side of the commutator, the side without the blue tape. So on this side of the commutator, this is CD. Now, the current is still going in here, but since it's going into the other half of the commutator, it's going to go from B, C, B, A. This is the direction that the current is going to flow now. So it's going to come out here. Once we've turned over to the other side, current is going in here this way, is still going into X. It always goes into X because from the circuit point of view, it's always positive to negative. However, instead of going into the red side of the commutator, now it's going to the purple side. And it's going to go in here. It's going to go to C, D, A, D, and then back to Y. So, from the circuit point of view, it is always going into X and always coming out of Y. However, in the coil, now it is starting from C and coming out at B. So, let's draw the direction of current to compare. On the first half of rotation, it goes in at B, which means it goes in at B to A to D and to C. But, the second half of rotation is going into C. So the second half rotation, the direction of current is going from C to D to A and finally to B. You can see it's a mirror image. It is actually going in the opposite direction. How does this help? Now imagine if the current didn't change direction. Imagine if the current was still going from B to A on this side. On the right side, if the current was going from B to A, then the direction of the force would still be downwards. The direction of force would still be downwards. And the direction of the force on CD, if current was coming out, would be upwards. If it was still downwards and upwards, then what would happen is, the coil will not be able to turn over to the other side because it will be forever stuck in that position. Let me demonstrate to you using this again. So if current was going in here, Let's look at the first half of the rotation. This is AB, AB. So the force is pulling down here and up here. So I'm going to rotate it. So it will rotate until it comes to this position. Now, it will never move from this position again because the force on the, this part of the coil, the top part of the coil, is acting upwards and the force on the bottom part of the coil is acting downwards. So it is just going to be fixed in this position. It will never change. The only way to get it moving again is for the force to act down on this part and the force to act up on this part which means we are essentially switching the direction of force now it is going to be down and up so that it will be able to continue rotating like this so in order to change the direction of force we can't be changing the direction of the permanent magnet so what we do is you have to change the direction of current flowing in the coil and this is the purpose of the commutator the moment it breaks and it connects to the other side, then the direction of current in the coil is changed. When the direction of current in the coil is changed, then the direction of force will also flip over. It will become the opposite side.
and this enables, this ensures that it continues to rotate. In the second half of rotation, once again, we have current going into the plane and the magnetic field is not to south. So, let's practice Fleming's left hand rule. Current is going in, away from you, into the plane. Magnetic field, left to right, move it over. Force is still downwards. The force is downwards here. And then let's look at AB. For AB, current is coming out of the plane, middle finger facing you, out of the plane. Magnetic field, left to right, flip it over. And the force is upwards. So the force is upwards here. Now you can see, we still have rotation in the counterclockwise direction. We maintain rotation in the same direction. Now this may look like the exact same thing as the first half of rotation. But notice the coil. The coil during the first half of rotation, this side is AB. The current is flowing in the direction of B to A into the plane on the left side, but the coil is AB. But look at AB on the second half of rotation. Current is coming out of the plane instead of in. So the direction of current in the coil has actually switched. But the direction of rotation is maintained. Again, let's take a look at the commutator. For the first half of the rotation, the red side is connected to carbon brush X. So current is going into the red side. But when you look at the second half of rotation, the current is going into the purple side and not the red side. This is how the commutator switches the direction of current in the coil while the power supply is still connected in the same way and the magnets are still in the same position. Once you change the direction of current in the coil, then the direction of force will change as well. Let's look at the direction of force in each side of the coil. Let's focus on AB. On the first rotation, first half, let me just clear this up. On the first half of rotation, what we get is the force is down, acting on AB. The force on AB is acting downwards. But on the second half of rotation, the force on AB is acting upwards. And then, when we continue the cycle again, once it goes to the other side, it will be down again, and then up again. So down, up, down, up. You can see every half rotation, the direction of force acting on one side of the coil is constantly changing. So this is what will ensure continuous rotation in the same direction. I hope this really helps to clear up your doubts, guys. Do comment down below if you have any questions. I will try my best to answer them as soon as possible. Uh, if you like this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button. It really does help because it tells YouTube that it's a good video and YouTube is going to show it to more people. So thank you very much for doing that. If you enjoy videos like this, do subscribe because I'll be producing at least one video a week. And I will see you guys in the next video.